There's a first time for everything, so they say. But who's they? We want to see what they were talking about. They also say that you never forget your first time, right? As you'll see, these videos will do the talking. You can count on that. Biggest river of the world in water volume. The Nego River and the Amazon Rivers. We've got spectacular CCTV footage, alleged UFO sightings from a space station, dolphins that emit light, and flowers with the face of a monkey. Most have never been caught on camera, and most of which truly are 15 mysterious things you haven't seen before. Number 15. Space Station UFOs UFO hunters claim this footage caught by cameras on board the International Space Station recently had released online by NASA was conclusive proof that aliens actually exist. See for yourself. The video uploaded to several UFO websites shows Samantha Cristoforetti, an Italian-European Space Agency astronaut, demonstrating how to operate window shutters at the space station. But as she talks to the camera, several white objects appear to come shooting into view. And this is not the first time this has happened. A fleet of lights before that was seen passing in unison, almost like a fleet of ships. Could this mysterious thing be connected? Experts suggested the so-called UFOs caught on camera were either lens reflections or ice particles. Other replies suggested that they could be fragments of space junk or lights shining from a city on Earth below. As it turns out, the objects are likely the result of human activity. One clever viewer theorized that they were probably emanating from fleets of fishing boats. The vessels use very bright artificial lights to attract their catch, like light bulbs so bright they can be seen from space. NASA explained the phenomenon in a blog post. The fishermen are likely luring a species known as the Japanese flying squid to the surface with bright xenon bulbs. Now, let's get ready for today's open discussion. Would you believe that this giant creature was spotted by a remotely operated vehicle and the image has been circulating the internet ever since? How could it not? Either that's some sort of huge elaborate statue of some sort of important human-like creature with little devil wings and tentacle-like hair, or this minuscule ROV is actually floating over some huge unseen monster climbing out of its crypt beneath the waves. Either way, these mysterious things you haven't seen before are too much to comprehend sometimes. God of the sea? The Greek god, Neptune, is often shown driving a chariot of horses or sea creatures and wielding the trident he used to control the waves. But where's the chariot? Or the trident? Then again, maybe the Greeks of ancient times were on to something after all. What do you think? Ocean god come to life? Or unexplainable art installation under the sea? Use the hashtag open discussion in the comments below. You want to know a little secret? If you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you'll have superpowers for the rest of your life. So what are you waiting for? Time to fly! Number 14. CCTV captures strange creature. This video was taken in Mexico. The owner of the security cameras claims to have seen the alleged entity with his own eyes. We can actually see him at the end of the video, with his daughter after the object is initially seen descending from the sky. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a metallic floating object appears. We can tell by its shadow that the object is getting progressively closer to the ground. As it reaches the ground, it seems to go slightly up again. At this point, the object gets at ground level again. The shimmering entity seems to be reflecting the light from the street lamps, not emitting it. The object seems to be constantly rising and falling in slow motion as the wind softly pushes it along the street. Its apparent shape-shifting capabilities are enhanced by its tumbling motion. The poor lighting of the street and the video quality add to that effect as well. It's all very believable. Its behavior is consistent with that of a partially deflated mylar balloon. It floats in the air because there's still enough helium inside to sustain its weight. It's made out of a soft, reflective material like mylar film, a type of plastic sheet manufactured with many different finishes, including metallic finishes. Number 13. Tesla Detects Ghost A video of a Tesla driving slowly through a graveyard is going viral because it looks like the car's collision detection program is spotting ghosts. Or at least, that's what fans of the supernatural would want us to believe. In the clip, the driver has a camera pointed at the interior dash screen that detects and displays objects that the car could potentially collide with when on autopilot. Usually, it's meant to keep the motorist aware of their surroundings even when they're not in control of the car. In the viral video taken in a graveyard, 
the system seemingly detects a human shape and a dog, all of which do not exist in front of the car. And it's not the first time reports of a Tesla tracking mysterious invisible figures inside a cemetery have surfaced. So there are a few theories about what the sensor system is actually picking up, including the flowers on the grave sites that could be mistaken for a small child or an animal. However, one commenter on the video explained that because the sensors are super strong, the car is actually detecting human anatomy from six feet underground. But the Tesla ghosts are more likely the result of a flaw in the vehicle's collision avoidance system. Number 12. Clotney Plates Can we see sound? Not directly, but we can come close. One way to observe acoustics phenomena is by studying standing waves in a solid medium known as Clotney Plates. A special technique creates patterns on the plate that reveals sound's physical nature. We now know that sound propagates in waves through a solid gas or liquid medium, but we didn't always know this. In the late 1700s, a German scientist named Ernst Klotny was the first to show that sound travels via waves by devising a way to visualize its vibrations. One of Klotny's inventions was a technique to study the motions of vibrating plates. Starting with a metal plate whose surface had been lightly sprinkled with sand, he found that it could produce characteristic patterns that could be related to the physical dimensions of the plate. Klotny's plates, as they came to be called, provided an early way to visualize the effects of vibrations on mechanical surfaces. We get to another resonant frequency. A Klotny plate shows how vibrations can create standing waves that create fun patterns that change as the vibrations change. Today, these figures are more likely to be produced by a virtual imaging program than by an actual vibrating plate. Number 11. Glowing Dolphins Recently, a photographer captured an amazing light show while filming the ocean. Glowing dolphins, and it's not an uncommon one. In the rare footage, dolphins swim through motion-sensitive dinoflagellates, a type of plankton that releases a burst of light when activated even by the slightest touch. These bursts of light are short-lived, but when in heavy motion, like when a big aquatic mammal is playing in it, the light shows begin. They're swimming through bioluminescence. It's the production and emission of light by a living organism. Even though most bioluminescent animals live in the ocean, there are land organisms, such as the firefly and foxfire, different types of bioluminescent fungi that are able to produce their own light too. This is the result of a reaction between a compound that occurs naturally in some organisms and oxidative enzymes resulting in the stunning glow we know as bioluminescence. The glorious blue glow in the water is generated by a common species of plankton. This is the reason that waves, or the sleek movement of dolphins, cause the plankton to glow. Still, several bioluminescent creatures can be found throughout the seas, both in the harsh environment that is the ocean floor as well as near the surface. Number 10. Baby Mammoth Digging through the northern Canadian permafrost in the seemingly aptly named Eureka Creek, it was a young miner's front-end loader that struck something unexpected in the Klondike gold fields. What he had stumbled upon would later be described as one of the most incredible mummified Ice Age animals ever discovered in the world. It was the preserved carcass of a baby woolly mammoth thought to be more than 35,000 years old. She has a trunk, she has a tail, she has tiny little ears, she has little prehensile end of a trunk where she could use it to grab grass. With much of the skin and hair intact, officials said the find ranks as the most complete mummified mammal found on the continent. The woolly mammoth is believed to have been a little over one month old when she died. Only 30 days into his job, the miner was operating the excavator with a ripping attachment that cut chunks out of a cliff of permafrost. He stopped what he was doing when something strange tumbled out of a section. Perhaps a bison skull, he thought. He got out and investigated. This was no bison, and it certainly wasn't just a skull. This was an animal with skin, eyes, and a trunk. Number 9. Monkey Orchids Also known as the Dracula Orchid, have you ever heard of monkey-faced orchids? As you can see, it has flowers that look exactly like the primate it was named after, with uniquely shaped petals and a center that paints a perfect picture of a monkey. A smiling one at that, it's probably the cutest orchid we've ever seen. Aside from its unique appearance, the orchid is also famous for the sweet, fruity fragrance it gives off when it's in full bloom, reminding you of ripe and juicy oranges. 
Recently, curious tourists and orchid aficionados alike headed over to Japan to witness a flower display dedicated solely to these one-of-a-kind orchid plants. In celebration of the Year of the Monkey, the Marine Science Museum launched an aptly-themed exhibit of these incredible monkey-faced orchids. While nothing would be cooler than having your very own orchid arrangement made of monkey-faced flowers beaming back at you, unfortunately, these orchid species are not only hard to come by, but even impossible to grow in typical environments. According to experts, they only thrive naturally in the cloud forests of southeastern Ecuador and Peru in South America, at elevations of up to 6,500 feet. Number 8. Quantum Levitation in this video, it appears that a puck cooled by liquid nitrogen is repelling the magnets embedded on a handheld device. It also shows that the angle of the magnet could be locked in a magnetic field. Later in the video, the puck can be seen zooming around a circular track of magnets. In the same way that maglev high-speed trains do, all this to say, quantum levitation as it's called is a process where scientists use the properties of quantum physics to levitate an object specifically a superconductor over a magnetic source like a levitation track designed for this purpose the reason this works is something called the meisner effect this effect dictates that a superconductor in a magnetic field will also expel the magnetic field inside of it and thus bend the magnetic field around it so if you just placed a superconductor like the puck on top of a magnet then the superconductor would just float off the magnet it's science the quantum levitation process becomes far more intriguing through the process of flux pinning or quantum locking when a material is in its superconducting state which involves very low temperatures it's strongly diamagnetic this means that when a magnetic field is externally applied it will create an equally opposing magnetic field locking it in place levitating number seven giant pyrosomes even marine biologists people whose job it is to study deep sea creatures find these creatures a total mystery it's no wonder they refer to them as the unicorns of the sea meet your friendly neighborhood giant pyrosome they can grow to be up to 60 feet long they're bioluminescent meaning they glow they actually get their names from the way they glow pyro means fire in greek and soma means body fire bodies their blue green light can be seen more than 100 feet away it gets better one long pyrosome is actually a collection of thousands of clones with each individual capable of copying itself and adding on to the gang pyrosomes are colonies composed of hundreds and sometimes thousands of individuals known as zooids individuals who work in unison to propel the colony through the water each individual clone is a small complete animal that filters water non-stop in order to obtain food flush out waste and contribute to the propulsion of the entire superorganism. These clones have a microscopic spinal cord and are therefore vertebrates, like people. Typically, the whole colony is shaped like a giant tube with a point on one end and an opening on the other, which can be up to six feet wide, large enough for a human to swim into. Number 6. Chinese River Monsters China may have its own Loch Ness Monster after mysterious footage showed a strange creature slithering up the Yangtze River. Reports suggest it was as thick as an average adult human's thigh, an accurate unit of measurement if ever there was one, and was estimated to be at least 10 feet long. It certainly seems like a powerful animal, swimming against the river current with ease. The creature was dubbed Three Gorges Water Monster on social media since it was spotted in the waves near the Three Gorges Dam. While some speculated that the rise in pollution gave birth to it, others called it a mythical monster. Videos of the strange creature went massively viral on social media platforms, even drawing comparisons to the mythical Loch Ness Monster of Scotland. The grainy footage showing what appeared to be a long black serpent in the river sparked many conspiracy theories. Scientists were skeptical of these theories and said it was probably a giant water snake. Forestry officials have so far declined to comment it's most likely to be a Burmese python, a snake common to the area and, while they largely spend their time on land, are also excellent swimmers. Number 5. Mystery Moon Crash Images of this crash site were taken by NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter and show that wayward debris, the origins of which are still contested, somehow punched out two overlapping craters when it smashed into the far side of the moon, traveling at 5,770 miles an hour. What's going on up there? A mysterious rocket smashed into the far side of the moon, 
and the unidentified spacecraft left behind a weird double crater, and it has scientists puzzled. They're not alone. A U.S. astronomer and developer of software that tracks near-Earth objects predicted that the orbiting piece of space junk would hit the moon's far side in a matter of months. As previously reported, it was even suggested that it was the second stage of a Falcon X rocket launched by SpaceX in 2015. But later observations and analysis of orbital data hinted that the object was a chunk of a Chinese spacecraft launched in 2014. Chinese officials, however, disagreed, claiming that this rocket's upper stage burned up in Earth's atmosphere years ago. So the mystery remains. Observations from the LRO show the two indentations on the lunar surface. The eastern crater measures 59 feet wide, while the western crater measures 52 and a half feet across. Number 4. Underwater Roads Is it just us, or does this look like a path traveling along the ocean floor? The feature resembles a road paved with cobblestones even. And what is this strange-looking formation doing in a protected group of islands close to Hawaii? During the discovery, researchers were studying the geology and biological systems of seamounts, plus underwater mountains with volcanic origins that are common in this area. And the team spotted this dried lake bed formation. Impressed researchers viewing the formation even described it as the road to Atlantis. However, it's no road to a mythical city. The so-called road to Atlantis has been ID'd as a fractured flow of volcanic rock formed in high-energy eruptions and rock fragments settled on the seabed in weird ways. The underwater road is really only an example of ancient active volcanic geology. The brick-like patterns likely come from heating and cooling cycles connected to eruptions. The yellow brick road vibes are just a coincidence. This formation highlights how these ocean explorations can shed light on processes that are normally hidden away in the deepest parts of the ocean. So why not follow the yellow brick road to a greater understanding of seabed geology? Number 3. Rivers Collide The meeting of the waters in Brazil is one of those places on Earth where you just say, wow! It's like six Mississippis worth of coffee-colored water that are converging here with two Mississippis worth of black tea-colored water to produce the greatest hydraulic spectacle on the planet. Put in terms of the sheer quantities of water, what we're seeing here is a volume of water at least a dozen times greater than the total of water found in all of Niagara. The coffee-colored water, rich with sediment, runs down from the Andes Mountains. The black tea water from the Colombian hills and interior jungles is nearly sediment-free and colored by decayed leaf and plant matter. It bears the name Rio Negro. Where the two rivers meet, they flow side by side within the same channel for several miles, a boundary visible from space and from the water surface itself. Turbulent eddies driven by the fastest moving white water eventually mix the two as they merge to become the lower Amazon River. But there's a good ways left to go as it continues across the continent. And although it will encounter several more tributaries along its route to the Atlantic Ocean, the meeting of waters remains the encounter to see. Number 2. Fake Houses Whatever's going on here, it would be very disturbing to be on a stroll through what it appears to be a very charming neighborhood only to discover nothing is what it seems. None of the houses are real. Are the grass and the greenery just a simulation? The simulation hypothesis proposes that all of our existence is a simulated reality, such as a computer simulation that convinces its inhabitants that the simulation is real. Glitch in the matrix? or a logical explanation. There's row upon row of what appear to be fake houses and the windows have stickers on them. If this is a Matrix-esque simulation, then it's very convincing. It's almost being the last person on Earth and discovering all of this is a dream. Maybe we're looking at an elaborate movie set. Some set designers had to create a fake neighborhood that would look really convincing on screen. The result is the illusion of an unbroken terraced row of houses. That's show business for you. Or it could be real estate razzle-dazzle. Some property developers will actually build fake homes in neighborhoods that look completely authentic. The whole point is to improve curb appeal when you're trying to sell big chunks of property that are zoned for multi-unit housing. It's called false housing, and it's a real estate trick. Number 1. Tarantula Sheds If you find your pet tarantula, if you actually have a pet tarantula, lying on its back, it's important that you don't touch it, as it's extremely fragile at this time. If you see it lying in this seemingly unnatural position, chances are it's simply because it's beginning to molt. That's shedding, more or less. Most tarantulas will molt while lying on their backs, though some will molt on their sides. This is where they shed the old exoskeleton. 
the spider has to bust out from the inside. It increases its heart rate to pump a lot of blood from the abdomen into the old exoskeleton. The pressure expands the body, which pushes on the old exoskeleton until it cracks. The spider flexes its muscles until the old exoskeleton falls away. How do you like its new look? It's still creepy if you ask us. Typically, the spider does most of its growing immediately after losing the old exoskeleton. Their new covering is highly flexible. The new exoskeleton is also very soft in this stage, making the spider particularly vulnerable to attack. Molting usually takes anywhere from 15 minutes to a full day, so keep an eye on your tarantula. Remember not to touch it. You should be able to verify if it's molting by the evidence it has left behind in the form of the molt. Of all the mysterious things, were you expecting this? That's what's so great about videos like these. They prove that no matter what, something else is going to come along that we haven't seen before. And we're here for it. Like and subscribe, we've got more great videos on the way.